Yep, another cocktail with an unclear history. I have the feeling I always say that. Isn't it weird? We're able to date Tutankhamun's dead or to describe the skeleton of a dinosaur, but for 100 years old cocktails, it's always unsure. Like today's cocktail, the millionaire. But anyways, even though we're not sure about this cocktail history, what I know for sure is it's gonna be delicious. So guys, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, go grab your shaker, we're gonna make this cocktail together right now. The millionaire that we're gonna make today dates back from the Prohibition era. Apparently, in that time, it was a trend to use that name for cocktails, so there was a lot of millionaires with different recipes. Two of them are still popular today, and the one that we're gonna make is my favorite, and probably the one that also kickstarted the trend of the millionaires. The oldest mention of this cocktail dates back from 1927 in Harry's Macalone's book, Barflies and Cocktails, and we attribute this recipe to the London's Ritz Carlton as the fastest I can pronounce that name. I literally tried a hundred times before. Cumultage. The London Ritz-Carlton. To the ritz Count. To the London Ritz-Carlton. The London Ritz-Carlton. London Ritz-Carlton. To London Ritz-Carlton. To the London Ritz-Carlton. To the... I'm just not able to pronounce that name. <laughs> The specs that we're going to use today are different than the original ones, but even in books, it's never the same. A little more of this or a little less of that. So today, what we're going to do is what I believe gives the best result. So for the ingredients, we're going to need bourbon. Sometimes I recommend a specific brand for cocktails, but here simply use your favorite bourbon. It's going to make a delicious cocktail. Then we're also going to need orange liqueur. And today I'm using Grand Marnier. I would have recommend Pierre Ferrand Dry Curacao. That's my favorite for this recipe, but unfortunately, I was just not able to find any bottle of that this week. So I used Grand Marnier, and it also gave me the occasion to test different orange liqueurs. And I can assure you, if you don't have Dry Curacao or Pierre Ferrand, you can use Grand Marnier, you can even use Cointreau. It's gonna be delicious, slightly different, but delicious. Then we're gonna need absinthe. If you don't have absinthe, you can also use Pernod or any anise flavored dry liqueur. Then we're gonna need grenadine. This is very important to use a good quality grenadine. So if the store-bought grenadine that you can find is not good, I mean by that, that it doesn't really taste like pomegranate juice and a little bit of rose water or orange blossom water, if you don't get that in your store-bought grenadine, make it yourself. It's no more complicated than making simple syrup. It's very, very simple. So I'm gonna put my recipe in the description down below. I guarantee you guys, it is a game changer. Then we're gonna need freshly squeezed lemon juice. And lastly, one egg white. And before we go any further, guys, I would like to ask you to stay till the end. I have a little something for you there. Uh, it's nothing crazy, but it's kind of funny and I think it's worth it. So now let's make the cocktail. First, in a cocktail shaker, we're going to pour two ounces or 60 ml of our bourbon. Half an ounce or 15 ml of our orange liqueur. One teaspoon or five ml of absinthe. Half an ounce or 15 ml of grenadine. and three quarters of an ounce or 22.5 mils of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Now we're also gonna add three quarters of an ounce or 22.5 mils of egg white. And we wanna emulsify this cocktail, so we're gonna give a good dry shake first. When you shake with egg white, it tends to expand a little bit in your shaker, so close it very tight, hold it tight, and shake it vigorously for about 10 seconds. Now we're gonna add ice to our shaker. And one more time, we're gonna shake it for about 10 seconds. Now we can fine strain it into a cocktail coupe.
And for the garnish, we're gonna spray a little bit of absinthe on top of the egg white. And then we're gonna garnish it with a Truffles on the Rocks million dollar bill. And there we go, my friends. This is how I make my millionaire cocktail. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. This is really good. And it's tart and citrusy. It's a complex bourbon sour with the tartness of the pomegranate and the sweetness of the orange that play beautifully together. This would fall in the category of the classic daisy cocktails, who are sours sweetened with pomegranate or orange flavors. Here, I don't know if it was like a huge change and innovation at that time to use both flavors in the cocktail, but it's marvelous. We also have a beautiful complexity because of the absinthe and it adds nice anise and herbaceous flavors without being overpowering on the cocktail. You see, you will have a lot of recipes that call for two dashes of absinthe all the way up to a quarter of an ounce of absinthe. Here we use a bar spoon or five mils and a little spray of absinthe on top. So I believe this is the perfect ratio for having the flavor of the absinthe without being overpowering. It's also best for people that are afraid of anise flavors. Here you don't have to be afraid, it's simply delicious. And on a side note, I would like to point out that when you use egg white in a cocktail, I think it is very important to use a fragrant garnish for two reasons. First one being, you will have a lot of foam on your cocktail that will separate your cocktail from your nose, so you will not have all the beautiful aroma naturally from the cocktail. Also, a lot of people think that the egg white smell is very unappealing, so by using a fragrant garnish, you will get rid of all those problems. Some of my favorite fragrant garnishes are citrus zest, grated nutmeg, and the atomizer. In my atomizer, I often use angostura, absinthe, orange blossom water, peated scotch, or mezcal. When you choose your garnish, just make sure that it's complementary to your cocktail. It doesn't have to be in your cocktail, but it has to work with it. And it's just a great and simple way to take your cocktails to another level. Speaking of which, I don't know if you watched last week's video, but I talked about easy ways to modify or create new cocktails, and I've done the exact same thing with the Millionaire in the past. I made a blueberry grenadine instead of the regular one, and I used Saint Germain instead of absinthe, and the result was fantastic. So if you want to watch that, I'm going to link it up here. And before we go today, guys, I promised you something funny in the intro. Well, that little million dollar bill is available for free download in the description down below. And I would love for you to download it, print it, make a millionaire, stack the bill on the cocktail, take a photo of it and tag us on Instagram. I will reshare all your cocktails in our stories. If you're not already following us on Instagram, this is the handle for it. So take the photo, tag us, and we will reshare your cocktail. Can't wait to see them all. So guys, that's it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if not already. Hit the like and the bell if you want to be notified when we post a new cocktail video. Until then, thank you very much again. Have a great day and see you very soon. Cheers.